So there are three things you need to do for ultimate two-handed backhand control, and you're going to find them out right now. Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to show you three incredibly simple things you can do to hit much better backhands. Now, this video is courtesy of 12K GP Tennis on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to his awesome channel. I have put his link in the description below. All right, so the first idea is going to be the grip. We need to talk about what grip you're going to use in order to hit consistent backhands. The second idea, and then I'm just going to run through these really quickly, and then we'll diagram a little more. You'll notice his strings are tilted. This is the second idea. You want your strings tilted down prior to hitting a consistent backhand because it makes it really easy to then get your strings to face forward at contact. So we got to close the racket face prior to hitting the ball. And then the last thing here really quickly is the left left side of the letter V. Look how the racket is actually staying to the left side of his hand. So he has the left side of the letter V. When you do that, it makes it so that you don't have any wrist movement and wrist movement can make the ball go all over the place. So you want a very quiet wrist position throughout the contact and it shows up in the left side of the letter V. All right, let's first talk about the grip. Now, I'm going to be discussing this as if you are right-handed. Just reverse this if you're a lefty. We're going to take your bottom hand so if you're right-handed, that's your right hand. We're going to take the base knuckle of your index finger and your heel pad, and we're going to put it on panel number two. That is the continental grip. So the knuckle and the heel pad go on that panel that runs the entire length of the grip. Your top hand is just simply going to be a forehand grip. It could be a semi-western or an eastern. Typically, the top hand on a two-handed backhand isn't really the issue. It's typically the bottom hand. So make sure that your bottom hand is on a continental grip. Now, once you get the proper grip, then the next idea is you have to make sure that as your racket is dropping down in the back, and even if you don't take it back high and drop, even if you just take it straight down, and that's okay. If, if you're looking for ultimate control, it might not be a bad idea to just keep the racket down on the way back. But if you're someone who keeps it up and then drops, which is preferred, that is the preferred method, then it's imperative that you tilt the strings down. When your strings are tilted down, that is called closing the racket face, it makes it very simple for then your strings to face forward when you hit the ball. A lot of players in this situation, at this moment in their swing, rather than the racket tilted down about 30 degrees, 45 degrees, the racket is straight up and down. And when the racket is straight up and down, the strings are facing directly off to the side. That is a recipe for inconsistency for most recreational players. Because when they, when they get to the ball, then the strings will face up. See, when your strings are closed in the back, they'll face forward at contact, which is what you want, especially when you're swinging low to high in order to put the top spin on the ball. But when your racket is straight up and down in the back and the strings are facing off to the side, when you swing up to the ball, then the strings naturally want to face open. And that's when you see people rolling the wrist over and then their strings face in a, face in a bunch of different places very quickly. And it just makes for inconsistency. So go out and film yourself. Make sure you have the right grip, but also make sure that you're tilting your strings down. The top hand here, your top hand, so if you're right-handed, that's your left hand, might feel like it's having to tilt down toward the ground, which will actually tilt the strings down toward the ground. That is an easy way to make sure that you have a consistent contact with your strings facing your target. And the last idea is the left side of the letter V. I'm going to show you Novak doing this in a second. The racket staying to the left of the hands is a hallmark of of consistent backhands. And that, again, this is if you are right-handed. You're just going to reverse this if you're a lefty. If you are right-handed, swinging up, keeping the racket to the left side of your hands. Here you can see the racket is to the left of his hands. Here he finishes, and the racket is to the left of the hands. Doing this helps minimize the amount of wrist that you use with your left hand or your top hand. The angle you have here between the arm and the racket, that angle then shows up at contact. So you have the, the arm and the racket, it's the same angle, and then the finish all the way up, the arm and the racket. So that angle, the relationship between the forearm and the racket stays intact. Look, tennis courts are only 19.6 degrees. Why? Let me show you what that means. From the corner of the court to the center mark, 
corner of the court to the center mark. That is 19.6 degrees. You know, all around you is 360, right? But we can't hit the ball anywhere. We have to keep the ball basically between those two yellow lines. So the less wrist we use, the more likely we're going to keep the racket angled the way we need at contact. So let's go over this really quickly, and then I'll show it to you in front of the camera. The proper grip, tilt your strings down, and then the appropriate side of the letter V when you're done. You'll even notice that Jack Sock here, he just finishes right there. He doesn't even go over the shoulder. And he's hitting with Novak right now and just blasts the backhand. Let me show you the next one here. There's basically the left side of the letter V again. Left side of the letter V. Now watch this backhand. He blasts this thing up the line. Oh, no, that no, wasn't that one. I think it's this one. Look at this. Left side of the letter V. He basically stops out in front. And look how he just pummels this ball down the line. And Novak barely, Novak barely gets to this ball. So it's not like doing this is going to make you hit slow. or It's just going to be super consistent. All right, let me show you what this looks like in front of the camera. Oh, I almost forgot to show you Novak. So Novak's got the continental grip. Easy to see that. Look at the closure of his racket. Look at his racket face close. This, these are these little things that they, the pros tend to swing so fast that we don't see them with the naked eye. And when you slow things down, you get to see things that we can easily copy in order to hit our best backhand. So closing the racket face makes it then very easy for him to get his strings facing toward his target. Right now he's hitting with Marin Cilic and he's about to hit this kind of like sharp cross court backhand. That's a really strong backhand. And then here's the left side of the letter V. Now, we saw Jack Sock in that same position, but Jack Sock would actually stop here. And that's okay. It's not like he always does that. He was just doing that in the backhands he was using against um, Novak. But here's Novak doing it, and watch Novak keep the racket to the left side of his hands, and then he drops the racket to his back. But the idea is simple. The angle that he has between the arm and the racket are the same angle he has here arm and racket. When you have the appropriate side of the letter V, and as a right-hander, that means the left side of the letter V, it keeps your wrist position fixed and makes you super consistent. All right, now I'm going to go in front of the camera. All right, buddy, really quiet. All right, if you haven't already, it would mean the world to me if you hit that like button and be sure, just check that you've subscribed to the channel and that you hit that notification bell. That way you know when I put up new videos. I'm trying to put up two new videos every single day. I've got the Tops from Pro here. You gotta get one of these as a, as a gift for yourself or a family member. The ability to practice what we're working on in this video at home whenever you want, it's a game changer and it gives you a huge advantage over your opponents. So the grip, you've got to take your bottom hand and we want to take the base knuckle of your index finger and your heel pad and put them on the second panel. So the second panel runs all the way up the grip. So you take those two spots, those two yellow circles I put on the screen, you want to put those two spots on the second panel. That's the continental grip, same as the serve. When you hold that grip, it makes sure that you can then close the racket face. So that's the second idea. So when you take your racket back, whether you keep it up like Jack Sock and Novak and then drop, or you go straight down, kind of like uh, Michael Chang, right? If When you take the racket back, whether keeping it up and dropping or going straight down, you want the strings tilted down. If your racket is straight up and down in the back, it tends to make amateur players less consistent. And the reason is because when your racket is straight up and down in the back, it will be open when you get to the ball, unless you start rolling the racket. Well, we know a body in motion tends to stay in motion. So once you start rolling the racket, it keeps rolling and gives you a very short contact zone. So you have to time it perfectly to be able to figure out how to get your racket to be square against the back of the ball. But if you simply just close your racket face in the back and then don't do anything, just swing up to the ball, your racket naturally is flat against the back of the ball. That's what's going to allow you to spin and brush up the back of the ball. The beauty of the Top Spin Pro is you get to see the ball spin. We want to see the ball spin so we can see and feel. It gives you that positive you know, um, feedback when you're practicing to know that you're spinning up the back. So when the strings are closed, that's what gets my strings to face forward and I spin up the back of the ball. And last for ultimate control, lift your racket up the way we saw Novak do, the way we saw Jack Sock do. And that is as a right-hander, you keep the racket 
to the left of your hands. That's that letter V I was talking about. R uh, lefties will go like this. You'll keep the right side of the letter V. When you tilt your strings down and then swing up, keeping the wrist angle fixed, it helps make sure that you hit the ball towards your target and keep the ball within that 19.6 degree angle, those two yellow lines that, that I drew from the corners of the singles court all the way back to the center mark. That's the width of the court. So the tennis court isn't super wide. Like we think of it like, oh, this tennis court's wide. We're basically playing on a sidewalk. We gotta basically hit the ball forward and that's it. And the way we can do that reliably is to keep the proper wrist angle. Now you can do it the way Jack Sock did it, where when you're done, you just finish here, or you can go up and then keep going and drop the racket down over your shoulder. Either way, you're gonna keep that wrist position. So work on the grip close the racket face and as you swing up don't use a lot of wrist which points the strings all over keep your wrist position fixed and get a topspin pro and when you do there's no doubt you're going to gain confidence win more matches and play much better tennis by the way did i say my affiliate link is in the description below this is ryan reedy from twominutetennis.net you got this